Hello once again YouTube and welcome to another video from The Domain. What are we doing today, Simon? Well, um, as you know, Dad, uh, you love big boxes arriving at your house. I do. And just filling up every crevasse. Back in the day, we had pallet loads of Mega coming to the house for Blocksfest. But this is a beast of a 3D printer that was sent to me for free by a company and is the start of a great journey of 3D printing Halo. I'm going to be 3D printing everything under the sun and moon. Just so you watch me. Today, we're going to start with unboxing this. Later on in this video, we're going to start trying to print something. The X plus three 3D printer. You know it's a beast when it's got a team lift sign on the side. It's 32 kilograms Whoa. of electronic goodness. Oh no. Oh no. Do you remember yesterday when it arrived? I said, I hope the box is over exaggerating the size of this but thing. But it isn't. But it's not. This is actually the size of this 3D printer, which is quite frightening. One, two, three. Lift in progress. That's good packaging. It's that. Very well packaged. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Stuff goes in. So when Chidi approached me saying they wanted to send me a 3D printer, I did not for a second think it would be this size. That's the printing table. I mean, we can make some big things in this. Printer like this would have cost four or 5,000, you know, when it was a, a, an up and coming technology. And now you can get a 3D printer like this for $700, which is just incredible. It's a well-made product. It looks very well-made, doesn't it? But you have to read the instructions oh, before yeah. you start. Well, folks, this is the Chidi X Plus 3 3D printer. Let's give it a go. Let's print. The workstation. Welcome back. So the basic objective here is unbox it, fit it, print something. Run a test print. Yeah, they, they have some test runs with the USB. The dryer box. Identified. Half kilogram of filament. Check. Filament spool holder. We've got a glue stick. We've got a glue stick. But I think they're to give extra protection. You just lift the corner and up. fit it to the existing rubber foot. Feet fitted. Step five already. We're cooking. I can't believe that, but it's just plug and play. We're on. And there we go, eh? A lot of this is going to be automated now. Like it's just, it is. It's just yes. cycling through a list of Commands. Remove the zip ties. Remove four screws on the fixed hotbed. Platform is clear. Simon, look, it's coming up. It's ascending. Check, check, check. So the filament temperature is 220. So now apparently we just wait until it gets to the set temperature. For the specific filament we're using. And really the whole thing is incredibly intuitive. Even the LED screen, when we forgot to remove a piece of packing foam, it told us which piece of packing foam we still needed to remove. Like yeah. this thing is very clever. Really straightforward. Like you could do this with no experience. I mean, we literally have no experience and we're doing it very, very easily. Are we back on? The desiccant bag goes in the dry box. The instructions are on the back of here. Put the filament into the dry box and pass the filament through the connection. Oh, we're at the temperature. temperature. Adjust the platform height with the up and down buttons on the right side. Make sure the nozzle and build plate are touching the leveling paper until you feel the friction. When you move the leveling paper between them, then hit the below button. Press yep. it, Jono. There goes the tray. This tray will go right up to where it starts printing, and as more layers are added, the tray will slowly lower and build up a full model layer by layer. Yeah, be careful, this thing gets hot. Piece by piece across the table, calibrating the distance from the head down to the table. Click the lid in place. Place this on the back of the machine. Oh, sounds like it's finished. Auto leveling complete. That blue tube is connected to the print head. Ladies and gentlemen, the next step is complete. We're ready to feed the filament. Really does give you all the instructions you need. <laughs> Literally. on the screen, it does. Literally. It's feeding right up through that tube. Now we set our temperature. So is that filament leaking out? It's just leaking out, yeah. That's our first 3D print. Well, I think we just set up a 3D printer. First printing, insert the USB drive and select the model inside the test folder. I cannot believe that it actually shows the file on the screen, that's amazing. Right, hold the phone everybody, we actually have a small update. We got excited when we saw a bunny on the screen and we decided to print it. That one takes two hours and there's a nice little tugboat that takes 17 minutes, so we're actually going to roll on with that one. That is just remarkable. All right, the only thing left to do is time lapse it. Let's check back in soon, John. Well done, Simon. All right, that is our first attempt, and that did not go well. The filament just broke apart, but it was going well for a second there. We just got to recalibrate it somehow. We got the start of the tugboat. A little tuggy. All but right, well, you know, it's a trial and error process. Let's try and recalibrate for. Tugboat number two. Tugboat number two. Little Tuggy's really coming along. Are you in love with Tuggy? I am in love with Tuggy. It's an amazing process to watch. Yeah, this it? is incredible. Those movements are so fast. It looks like the calibration was successful. We think uh, it might have just been those rubber feet. We hadn't put them on properly and the vibrations probably just knocked it off balance. But that is coming along now. Look. 
look at little Toggy go. This is very exciting. Oh, it's done. Little Toggy. Look at that. That is remarkable. You know, you can see the, the layers of the lines from this type of filament, but man, the detail on there is so much better than I thought. Successful first print. It's Tuggy signing off. Signing off. Even the fact that it comes with a 16 gigabyte memory stick is still really great value. Honestly, I keep on going over this point, but the ease of this process, it is just so straightforward. Touch wood, fingers crossed. We've downloaded four files here. Just deposit the STL files onto there? I don't know. We're gonna get our file. I'm gonna start with this Master Chief keychain because like that's gotta be easy, right? So let's slice it. I'll call your bluff. It's just gonna fall over. Wish me luck. Let's just give it a go. No, it's lost it. Mission abort. We lost that one, boys. Okay, so my working theory is that it was just too small because I scaled it down so much. So we have a slightly scaled down one still, but now a 43 minute print time. We're just gonna see if that works. I think that's the logical next step. Mission abort, mission abort, we lost it's it. It's not gonna stick that down. And it needs to be bigger. It turns out the solution might have been staring us in the face this whole time. This <laughs> entire review, I've been wondering, why did they include a glue stick? Apparently, for certain prints that don't stick well enough, get a glue stick on Now there. I've got something better. This is an hour and a half print cycle. This is a bust of the Master Chief, and it looks very solid. It's just a big, thick object. Master Chief round two, let's finish the fight. It's the final moment. Look at it go, it looks gorgeous. Final moments, 99%. Ladies and gentlemen, the Master Chief. That is excellent. It's magnificent. It's amazing to see all the detail. Alright folks, it's been about 24 hours of, uh, you know, making 3D printed pieces, which is pretty incredible. And there are so many amazing open source free libraries of content that you can just pull from and make some dope stuff. My first little print, Tuggy, the Tugster, little tugboat, absolutely gorgeous. As you can tell by the reactions my dad and I had in the video, it's just so impressive that you can do that with a basic STL file. Remarkable. So obviously straight away after that, what Halo can I make? The Halo Combat Evolved sign. There is about a billion settings that I don't understand yet. So this is not the most fine detail. Printer speed, nozzle speed, and temperature settings, and so much. So I think I can improve the quality over time. Cortana chip. I printed this one, it's in two pieces. When I was applying the Gorilla Glue, I didn't have a very good application, so they didn't join together very well. I wanted more of these anyway to hand out at events coming soon, so I made 10 of them. It took about four 
hours to print, but these are really high quality. And again, just free files on the internet. The people that make these are absolute goats. I tried to print a mini Blood Gulch. You're not gonna be able to see this very well. These are meant to be the towers of Blood Gulch, the red and blue bases. You can actually see the doors running into the bases and eventually I will print something that small. I just gotta fine tune the settings. I found a text to SDL converter online. So made a podcast evolved, G Customs Creation, Strandy42 and J Mac paints little custom signs. It was so easy and they make such good gifts. A teeny tiny Raider Nation little stand for my friend Kellen, big Raiders fan. We watched a lot of games together when I lived in Minneapolis. Guys, the, the world of printing is evolving and I'm all here for it. One last massive thanks to Chidi Tech for sending me the X Plus 3. It's an incredible piece of software and so intuitive. I cannot wait to get to know it better. And you can check these out with a new upgraded all metal frame, high grade harness, high grade hardness steel linear with hollow optical axis, a new cooling system, temperature controlled chamber and drying box. And the biggest feature for me by far, how much of it is auto calibrated. Like you can pick this up and get going today. So thanks so much for the sponsorship again. Stick it with the domain for more 3D printing. We are just getting started.